going on has been paid for by the WZWA Network. What's going on, you sons of bitches? And welcome to the WZWA Network, an hour review show here of NXT 2.0 from, I believe, the 23rd of November, 2021. And uh, at this time, of course, I have to introduce my co-host, the one and only Juicy Boy. What's going on, cunt? What the fuck is up? Another episode of NXT 2.0 under our belts. Let's fucking chop it up, my friend. Yeah, bro. We missed last week's show. We apologize for that, but I was getting drunk with a friend of mine. So California uh, knows how yep. to party. That's it, bro. I fucking love that. Okay. Starting the show. Grayson Waller interrupts the uh then now forever bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um and starts name dropping Cena, Rock, Reigns, and puts mm-hmm. himself in the same category <laughs> as them. Um, and then, of course, Tommaso Ciampa uh, came out to shut him up. There was a matchup that was set up between the two. What did you think, bro? Yeah, well, I really loved Grayson Waller's promo here. I loved the, you know, the arrogant, smarmy attitude that he put across, putting himself into a league with some of the all-time greats, uh, and also low-key bashing the fans for their reaction to Roman Reigns and John Cena over the years. Uh you know, I, I thought it was just phenomenal promo work. Uh, the match itself, like I thought this match was got pretty good towards the end. I'd probably give the match itself maybe a C and then I'd give the promo work maybe like a, a B minus. So, yeah, I'd give this thing, I'd say probably a B plus overall. Um, I thought it was really good, really well done. Yeah. Uh, so for me, you know, a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I I did like Waller's selling when he couldn't be like so surprised that Champa was fucking really wow. giving it to him. Uh, I also liked the spot where Waller was just thrown over the announce table. Um, and then my next note was fucking advert cunt. Uh, mm-hmm. God, I hate picture and picture, bro. I fucking hate it. It's um, but yeah, you know, ugh, this is this is a me problem. Okay, I my next note was come on, Tommaso, hurry up. Like I just. Mm-hmm. I just want to get things over and done with when I know what the result's going to be. Uh, I was glad it was over, but it was a good match. It was good. It was good. Uh, Grayson ended up looking quite good out there and strong, and Tommaso still looks strong too. Uh, backstage, Joe Gacy, LA Knight, a little bit of a, uh, a confrontation. What did you think? Yeah, I thought this was good as well. Um, toxic Attraction. Not long after this, they're backstage. They're walking around. They see us some smashed up shit on the floor. What did you think of this, bro? Yeah, this was really good as well. Again, I like the fact that they're talking about what they're going to do in the War Games match and foreshadowing Kaylee Ray with the, the you know, all the junk that was spread around there. Obviously, an allusion to the vignettes we saw earlier. And later on, we'd find out Kaylee Ray, of course, is going to be competing in War Games as well. So that was a real nice way to uh, connect those dots there. Yeah, uh, there was a Cameron Grimes promo after this. I think this is my favorite thing on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we missed out on last week's poker game. Um, but, you know, Grimes was, you know, had actual tears coming down his face, talking about his beginnings in life and how far he's come. And... Um, that, you know, his long beard and the long hair was a symbol to him of, of the hard times he's been through. Duke Hudson interrupts uh, he, in the middle of a hair, or just as a haircut of his is finished. What are the odds? This is all about hair at this point now. Uh, and it is leading to uh, Grimes wanting to go all in uh, and uh, put his hair on the line if Duke will put his lovely thick head of hair on the line at war games in a hair versus hair match. Love the segment. What did you think, motherfucker? Yeah, I also thought that this was just a, a um, you know, a tremendous promo. Like, oh, so far the show is just firing on all cylinders, you know, as we get into this point. Um, I thought that, you know, I already really enjoyed the Cameron Grimes gimmick. Uh, I felt like the Cameron Grimes gimmick was 
the missing piece of the puzzle as far as Trevor Lee, the wrestler, was concerned because he's always been able to go in the ring, uh, but he never really had like a very discernible character. And then Cameron Grimes, very strong, very distinct character. He plays it well. He gets into it. He embodies it. But now in this promo here, we are now seeing a new dimension to that Cameron Grimes character, a more serious, a more solemn, a more focused side. Um, you know, the tears looked real. I think they were, I think it was an outstanding promo. Um, I think that he really, he really managed to convey to the audience why it was such an insult that a bit of his beard got, beard got snipped and a bit of his hair got cut. Obviously, you know, anytime another person imposes their will on you, uh, against your will that's not a good thing but it's one of those things as well where without him selling the significance of that uh, of that insult with this promo work it might not have perhaps had the impact that I think it has now had uh, because of his promo work here uh, you know as you said eventually like uh, Duke and Cameron Grimes are going back and forth I really like Duke Hudson's work in this in this promo as well I thought that he really carried himself with a really smarmy, smug attitude that you just want to see him get the crap kicked out of him. Uh, Grimes makes the challenge, hair versus hair. Because of the promo and uh, the segment we, that happened last week, guess what? Now it's got heat on it. And I was like, as soon as they announced hair versus hair, we were both just like, oh boy, this is going to be good now. Uh, so that to me is the mark of a great segment and I'd give it an A minus. It was tremendous work. Lovely, bro. Um, Pete Dunn has a promo next, and um, I just thought it, I just wanted to bring up that he said North American Championship, N O R F. Um, gotta love the English accent, bro. Uh, Indy and Persia have an interview, they're teasing some sort of uh shit going on here. Um, Dexter Loomis had his hand broken last week. What did you think of the interview here? Yeah, uh, I thought it was okay. It was just kind of there for me. Yeah, and I'll tell you something that was there, and I was happy it was there. It was a vignette for um, a soon-to-be debuting lady named uh, Tiffany Stratton. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, bro, okay, uh, this 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 vignette moved for me. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I bet it, I bet it did. It it moved me, bro. I felt it move. Of, better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and anyone out there that wants to say, you know, oh, you're objectifying, mate, that they put her in a, in a tennis skirt and this they're was showing... Meant, you. This was meant to be sexual. <laughs> like, this was yeah. meant to be seductive yeah. and, and sexual, the way that it came across. Yeah. Like, she's a very... Like, it, it's a very, obviously, rich kid, like, rich, arrogant girl, but it's also, like, you know... Look how hot she is as well. Definitely, it was supposed to be showing off that that um that seductive power that the character I think is going to have. You know, you know, like the kind of woman that you might see out of a movie like Wall Street from the eighties, like rich, fucking mm. spoiled, but also intelligent, like driven, yeah. wants to be the center of the universe. That's what I got from this vignette. Yeah, it was uh, good stuff, bro. Very, very good. Uh, moving forward, the part of the show I hated the most. Mm -hmm. Katanzaro and Carter take on Indy and Persia in a tag team matchup. Um, I did not like the psychology in this match, bro. Mm -hmm. I did not like it at all. Yeah. Uh, you're, you, even Whatever's going on, if you're in there and you're going to be fighting someone and like someone's going to be throwing a fist your way, you're not going to be all depressed and like on the ring apron, just like all upset about your partner's hands getting broken and being completely out of the match. Even in the ring, she was doing it. I didn't like that at all. Um, I, I, you know, I was not into it at all. And uh, the finish was okay, but I just wrote, fuck this shit. Like there's a, there's got to be a better way that they can tell this story than uh having her out there and not be in the in the zone. What did you think, dude? Yeah, um, look, I would agree. I think that this, I, while I don't want to say it's an insult to the intelligence, I do think that it pushes the suspension of disbelief maybe a bit too far. Like, 
So Persia asked her before the match, are you sure you want to do this? I don't mind doing it on my own. And repeatedly, Indy Harbour says, no, I'm good. I can do this. So that's what they're going for, that she's distracted from the match because she's depressed about what happened to her husband. And it's going to uh, widen the wedge that's growing between Persia and Indy slowly because Persia has been getting more and more annoyed with uh, Indy and Dex's relationship constantly being the center of attention all the time. That's slowly being built. But as you said, Carl, the way that she went about it, she's literally standing on the apron. Persia's like got the opponent. She goes to reach out for a tag. Indy's sitting there like a high school girl, you know, at the window seal in detention. Huh. Like that, you know, and then, then per- Indy gets tagged in. She's still acting all depressed and stuff while she's supposed to be doing the match. That is shit that you'd expect on a show for children. That's the kind of shit that I expect to see on AEW, not the kind of shit I am used to seeing on NXT. Uh, I'm reminded of an old angle I saw uh, quite some from 1996 WWF, bro, where the smoking guns ended up uh, having a dispute with each other because. Billy kept getting sidetracked, worried about Sonny on the outside. It all comes to a head eventually on one pay-per-view. Sonny gets bumped off the apron. Billy's too busy worrying about her, checking on her, making sure she's all right. When Bart goes for the tag, Billy's not there because he's checking on Sonny. Bart ends up taking the loss in this match. It implodes at that point. Um, You know, if you wanted to do this angle properly, they should have had Dexter be actually dragged out onto the stage by you know his attacker and then that distraction could then you know provide some tangible reason for indy not being fully invested in the match but as they did it bro as you said i agree it didn't work it was silly yeah i mean it might have made more sense if like dexter had his hand broken just before she went out there for Mm. this match yeah but it's been a week it's been a week well you've been like all upset and not sorry his Sorry, hand's probably no. in a cast now. He's probably got it all wrapped up. It's fine. In six weeks, it'll be fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, moving forward, bro. Uh, Grimes backstage. Andre mm. Chase runs into him. Not really sure what the point of this was. Uh, I guess oh. maybe just to get Andre on the show, but uh, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of weird because you didn't know what, what Andre Chase was doing, you know? Like, why is he touring with a bunch of students backstage randomly? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, continue, bro. Yeah. It's just, it was just a bit, a bit random. Um, mm-hmm. Next up, another foregone conclusion, Santos Escobar. We haven't seen him in a few weeks. He's, I think he was there last week, but we didn't, didn't watch last week, unfortunately. Uh, mm-hmm. Against Malik Blade. And the job counter now for Malik Blade will be 0-3 since we've been reviewing NXT. And uh, we haven't seen him for a few weeks now uh, because he's been jobbing on 205 Live. That's um, right. But there is no Malik Blade job counter over there. It only no. Counts, it only not. counts on NXT. No, we and we would never watch 205. Why, why would no. we watch 205 Live? I, I don't, don't know, even think... I don't know who watches 205 Live. No. Like, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like... For all I know, Brock Lesnar's doing jobs on 205 Live. Who would know? Nobody watches, you know? It's as good as trying something out on a house show. <laughs> I don't know what the point of it is. Like, is there, do you think there's, some, there's there wouldn't even be one person in the world, there, there, there's people that are dedicated to AEW, dedicated to NXT. Some people prefer Raw to SmackDown or SmackDown to Raw. I bleed blue, I bleed red. Mm-hmm. Is there someone out there? Anyone out there whose sole dedication is 205 Live? Anyone? I mean, like 205 is the only accurate thing about that is uh, that's the number of viewers it probably gets on a fucking weekly basis. You know what I mean? Owned. Fucking owned. Um, Don't know why they have it. Might as well just scrap it. You know, you're you're firing all these people for budget cuts. How about you cut the show that you they don't do anything with? It's pointless now. Two or five. Um, also, the number of people that have been fired in the last week and a half. Like <laughs> uh, Escobar gets the win after the match. Promo time. Von Wagner and Kyle O'Reilly interrupt, talking right. about 
um, the the tag title situation, wanting a shot at the belts, and then of course, yeah, das ist the Imperium. Uh, they interrupt as well, and uh, there's a little bit of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of all of that shit? Um, well, first of all, I think that uh, uh, Fabian Eichner's uh, turtleneck was outstanding. Um, I actually, I think it was Marcel Bartel's turtleneck, sorry. Um, <clears throat> outstanding turtleneck, very stylish, very European, liked it. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. Let, let's rewind a little bit. So, well, um, Bomb Wagner and Kyle O'Reilly right, interrupted. Right, right, right. I just wanted to re- and get then, my thoughts back. Okay, yeah, yeah. Das is the fucking Imperium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to point out. So Kyle O'Reilly and Von Wagner, they came out, they said a few things. I want to say that this wasn't bad, but I felt bad for Von Wagner when he did his little bit of the promo because it was so wooden and you could tell that word for word for word like down to the ands and the is is of the of the promo everything was was recited from a script that had been handed to him and you could tell that he was really uncomfortable trying to like remember this stuff and trying to deliver it in an impactful way and so it ended up being really so so and just barely possible um I think it actually would have been much better if you just let the fucking son of a bitch like say something from his own in his own verbiage for 30 seconds. It would have come across better and you could have got the same information across. Uh, But, you know, having said that, I, I, I always appreciate when somebody puts in the effort though, he's trying, like hopefully he's going to get better as we go along. Um, I think that uh, when Imperium came out onto the balcony, they stole this segment for me. It was a runaway. Um, you know, I thought the segment was all right beforehand, but then when when they showed up, bro, on the scene, I was like, okay, suddenly this is interesting. Like, I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, I um, wasn't interested before they walked up. So as we said, the way that they carry themselves, the way that they present themselves, you know, they, they carry themselves like big stars, like legitimate stars from Europe that are now making their way over in the States in NXT. Um I honestly feel like as characters, they kind of owned everybody else that was out there for the segment as well, just by virtue of the fact that physically they're, they're higher up. They're on that balcony. Everyone else is down there in the ring. And then they basically uh, accused them of being like children fighting in the playground. Um, they, they pretty much owned uh, everyone else in the segment as far as just who came out of it looking the best. Uh, I yeah. have to give this segment a C plus. I thought that this really picked up thanks to Imperium and, uh, you know, nothing offensive other than that. Very pure, bro. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned that Von Wagner, you felt it was, it was quite wooden. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt like there was something else that was quite wooden. Um, <laughs> me after the Tiffany Stratton promo. Thank you. <laughs> hi <laughs> <laughs> there's something wrong with me um cora jade backstage uh with raquel and shirai and uh stark um there's a big argument going on cora says uh she's gonna fucking handle some shit out there with mandy rose not really much to add there um yeah. but uh following this bro <clears throat> there was an interview um with uh at Hey, hey, AT. Hey, AT. Hey, AT. Oh. How, you, how you fucking doing? Oh, I'm fucking oh. doing amazing oh. over here. How I'm the fucking... fuck you doing, Tone, huh? I can't even sleep at night. My mattress has so much cash stashed under it, huh? I forget about it, my paisan, huh? Hey, you my fucking... grandmother's mushroom and spinach frajol. I fucking love it. You fucking fugazi, huh? What the fuck did you just say to me? You fucking fugazi, huh? Hey, you're a fucking fugazi. You fucking. You're a fucking fugazi, huh? Hey, hey, my own, my own, my own, my own, my own. Don't talk to me like that. Don't say those things, yeah. huh? Don't you talk? I'll call my guy Hesh. Hey, I'll, I'll fucking call my guy Hesh. Hey, I'll fucking slap your guy Hesh in the head with the back of my knuckles, huh? <laughs> Fuck you, every week. That. <laughs> every week go on every week I want this to go longer and longer. Oh All fucking right. hell. So Tony D'Angelo. It's T. 
It's hey. T. Hey, Tom. T. Oh. 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 Mackenzie, you can be my Goomba. Mm -hmm. Goomba. Goomba, sorry. <laughs> Goomba. <laughs> Goomba was the insult that he used to describe Camelo. Camelo oh, all right. He's a Goomba and Mackenzie's mm -hmm. my Goomba. Right. Yeah. Okay, bro. What did you think of all that? <laughs> I, th I thought it was a real nice uh, slice of uh, real nice slice of gabagool. Um, I'd, I'd yeah. probably give the whole thing B. <laughs> probably give the whole thing B plus. Isn't gabagool like a sauce or something? I don't. Know. No, it's like a uh, like a Italian American slang for um, prosciutto, bro. All right. Bit of gabagool. Yeah. Hey, get Bit over of... here with that gabagool, huh? Anyway, okay. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Sacramoni's so fucking fat, her blood type is ragu. <laughs> I fucking love the Sopranos. Man. Hey, 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 you know what? Jenny's so fucking fat, she's having a 95 pound mole removed from her ass. <laughs> like they all fucking Ralphie fucking was such a cunt, bro. I fucking hate Ralphie. Oh, hey, wait, wait, ready, ready? I'll do, I got this. Ready? I have come. To reclaim Rome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. Okay, moving forward, bro. Uh, I didn't even mention anything about what he said or anything like that. I you know, just fucking it's love just Tony Dance. Bro, bro. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Mandy Rose and Cora Jade uh, in the next contest, which was certainly a welcome addition to the show for me, mm -hmm. um, considering, you know, what's been happening to me. <laughs> throughout uh, <clears throat> uh, so yeah <clears throat> I didn't write many notes for this it was just it kind of was what it was um, you know I didn't expect Cora to win so that was a nice surprise uh, Kaylee Ray came out to help with the upset win um, and by the way bro um, Kaylee Ray she's from fucking Scotland yeah, that's right. She's from fucking Scotland. She likes to go into rage rooms and fucking smash plates and glasses and whatever else is in there. And she's a crazy bitch. <laughs> what did you think of the match, man? Where to go? Like, I thought it was all right, you know. Thought it was a little bit of, you know, you know, a little bit of biffle, a little bit of a band band. Nah, but um, no, nah, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I think uh, Mandy Rose is really um, growing into a role as sort of like the top, top woman on the scene. Um, you know, and I think Cora Jade like does a good job as well. She plays her role really well, and um, she seems to have really like a distinct, strong idea of who her character is. Like, I feel like Cora Jade is actually like that backstage. If you were to meet her, you know what I'm saying? There's an authenticity there. So I like this. I'm going to give this probably a C minus, bro. Yep, cool, bro. Yeah. Uh, so Kaylee Ray joins Raquel, uh, Shirai, and um, Cora for the mm -hmm. War Games match coming up at War Games. Moving forward, uh, your favorite Joe Gacy. Uh, against LA Knight. The match never even happens after a attack from Grayson Waller and the fight continued until it, right until the end of the show. Mm -hmm. um, what we popped most though, bro, is whilst all this fighting was going Once on, because he was Once in the again. ring, he was in the ring ready to fight. You know, he was in the ring ready yeah, to have a match. Like whilst all that's up. going on, he's seen it take place and he's already made the thought in his mind, okay, well, the match isn't happening now. And he's probably just calmly got out the ring. This craziness is going on over here. <laughs> calmly got out the ring, grabbed a chair, put the chair in the ring and sat down on the chair, had a microphone, waiting for it to be over, and then just started talking when it was over. Yeah. It's the same as Pop when me. he stole the microphone from Grayson Waller and then made it his segment. It was <laughs> yeah. a few weeks ago. It's another <laughs> yeah, example that was wicked. of that. <laughs> of him just like hiding behind this veil of being like this accepting you know progressive character but in reality he just thinks he's better than everybody because he doesn't pay the slightest bit of attention to what any of them think or say it's just all about joe gacy 
So yeah, man, another great little example of that here today. Yeah, bro. He's interrupted by the diamond mine, which is a, a stable that I'm really getting into lately. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's a bit of back and forth with him and Roderick Strong. Uh, and uh, of course, the, I love the comment about the Cruiserweight title being weight shaming. That's <laughs> <laughs> That was good. Oh man, that's some great stuff. Um, and of course, at the end of the segment, um, Parker Bordeaux, whatever his character's name is, um, yeah, Nails two point oh. Um, yeah, he uh, he was there to back up his boy Joe. Um, excited for Strong versus Gacy at War Games, bro. I think I am, and I'm also excited about this alliance between Gacy and Parker Bordeaux. It's just like the whole Gacy character is really working with me at the moment. It's really over with me at the moment. Yeah. Do you want to give this segment a rating? Yeah, I'd probably give it a B minus. Excellent. Uh, following this, I don't know how much of this you saw, but Ivy Nile uh, won a squash match against a fuck man. I, I was supposed to double check who it was. And I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to fucking find it. But while I do that, what did you think of that fucking finishing move that she used? Oh, I loved the uh, the dragon sleeper. Uh, the variation was she hooks in the dragon sleeper with the usual arm that you would use, then reaches behind her own back like this till she can grab her other hand. And uh, of course, the... Uh, the talk that's required for her to reach around and grab her other hand while she's holding the person in the dragon sleeper uh, acts as a crank when she grabs on because uh, she's forcing this kind of grip that's not really natural and it just adds this natural crank to it when she locks it in. Uh, yeah. Kind of maybe maybe a bit of word salad there trying to explain it, but I think you get the idea. It looked really uh looked really credible it looked realistic it looked like something that would actually make somebody tap out if you slapped it on him in real life uh and i think it it did wonders here for continuing to build the credibility of all the members of the the diamond mine yeah excellent bro and that was oh, uh yulisa leon was the yulisa yeah, leon, leon was the opponent Yep, and yes. One more thing I wanted to point out as well about the Gacy uh, confrontation with the Diamond Mine. I, uh, I said mind. Diamond Mine. <laughs> uh, I really liked the touch of the match between Joe Gacy and Roderick Strong gets, gets made official and it's accepted. And then uh, Malcolm Bivens immediately says, all right, guys, take him out. You know, take out the trash. Like he's going to, even though they've already done their business, he's not going to leave. They're going to put a beating on him. Then yeah. you see a huge hand from off screen come over and grab Joe Gacy's shoulder. And then Malcolm Bivens is like, whoa, guys, slow down, slow down, stop. And then it pans out a little bit. And there's Parker Bordeaux, who we've seen making appearances near Joe Gacy in the last few weeks, standing at Joe Gacy's side. He has Joe Gacy's back. This one human being just standing there saying and doing nothing was enough to intimidate a faction of five highly trained professional wrestlers and mixed martial artists and made them back down. Brilliant piece of booking, perfect way to sort of officially announce that Joe Gacy is associated with Parker Bordeaux and that Gacy has some sort of uh, uh, control or leverage over Parker Bordeaux. And so I thought that was brilliant. We established that and we've instantly shown how dangerous Parker Bordeaux is uh, because he's made the whole diamond mine back down just by doing nothing, just by standing there, by his presence alone. And by association, we've also added to Joe Gacy's credibility and danger factor because if Joe Gacy has somehow managed to get into cahoots with Parker Bordeaux and has influence over this monster, how dangerous does that make an intelligent competitor like Joe Gacy? Absolutely, bro. Well said, well spotted, uh, well analysed. Um, and as far as uh, Ivy Nile is concerned, uh, if she would like to lock in a reach around on me, uh, she can do that anytime. Thank you. You're encouraging, <laughs> my friend. Yep. Uh, Solo Sokoa is next uh, mm. with a vignette. Mm. Uh, would have preferred to see him wrestle on the show, but that's okay. Can't have everything. 
Um, what did you think of this little bit of business? I don't know if you, uh, back in your childhood days, ever grabbed any of the old uh, King of the Cage MMA uh, videotapes or DVDs, which they used to have alongside the, the wrestling section. They'd have the MMA and it would be like old school UFC. This vignette right, yep. by Solo Sokoa reminded me of a hype package that I would see before a fight on one of those old 90s King of the Cage MMA DVDs. It just looked gritty. It looked raw. It's just one guy with a camera, and then it's just him, him training into cut with him just standing there in the training area, just talking to the camera, talking about who he is, where he comes from. That's what they used to do for each competitor in King of the Cage before they'd bring him out there for their fight. So, you know, that had a smack of authenticity for me. I thought that this is exactly the oomph that Solo Sokoa's character needs because the first week he debuted, I felt like that fell a little flat. And the second week he had a, he had his debut match. That was a little bit better than the first week, but still felt a little bit flat. Now here, this vignette, I'm like, okay, now we've got some, some fire happening behind this guy. He's shown himself to be a bit more serious. He's looking like a lot more of a badass now. This is what he needs. Yep, yeah, sick, bro. Um, there's some more shit backstage. Knight and Waller are still fucking going after each other, screaming and carrying Go on. Pop out of me. Go pop out of me. Yeah, um, it's just going to keep going on. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, there's a promo for Boa, right? For, I don't know how many weeks I've been calling the the crazy chick that is with Zia Lee, and I think another time I called her Mia Yim. <laughs> it's May. It's May. It's May Ying. Yeah. I don't know who Zia Lee is. I don't know. <laughs> that's a different. That's, that's a different wrestler. Yeah, I'm just. I, I keep getting people fucking mixed up. Like some of these names are are quite similar. Anyway, she's passed on her powers now to Boa. I don't know where she's gone. She's probably getting released or something. <laughs> um, but I anyway, let's move on from there. With the last crop. <laughs> let's move on from there, bro. Uh, the Grizzled Young Veterans versus Briggs and Jensen. Thoughts? Um, I, 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 I liked some of what I saw from Briggs and Jensen. I liked the authenticity. There were some things about the way they moved around in the ring where it was like, I, it's hard to describe, but like they kind of have these redneck outdoors, you know, kind of like rough country type mm -hmm. gimmicks. And just the way that they moved around the ring, it felt like they actually were having a barroom brawl, you know, in the ring, just with their footwork. And, and it's hard to explain, but, but, you know, I think if you watch it, you guys will pick up what I'm talking about. There was, a, again, I use that word for the third time now, authenticity in the way they put their characters across made you know i'm interested in seeing what they do going forward however i didn't really care for the match itself that much with the exception of a few big spots you know is i like everyone that was involved in the match i like the grizzled young veterans i think they're funny well-spoken guys uh but yeah man i don't know what it is maybe it's just a me problem uh, but this this match kind of fell flat for me. I, I you know I'd probably give this a, a D plus. Yeah, I'll be honest, bro. I wasn't really interested in the match. Um, no maybe I'm just not it. invested. Yeah, no that's it. It, it, it. That's the problem with a lot of the matches on the show that I'm not enjoying. No heat on them. Whereas Mandy Rose and Cora Jade, not just because they're very attractive, but like there's heat on the match. Like I cared about the match because shit's happened in the past. Matters, um, that's made me give it a shit. Because shit's happened in the past. They've tussled in the past, but we're also heading into war games and there's still an undecided spot on Cora Jade's team. That's why that's mm -hmm. significant. That's why there's heat on it because it's related to that storyline. Absolutely, motherfucker. Um, motherfucker. Yes, yeah, so I didn't really care the about the match. Uh, fucking whatever, cunt. Um, the Grizzled Young Veterans, I think that they're a really good team and you know, I would have rather them go over here, but... Yeah, whatever, cunt. Yeah, whatevs. They run down the car for war games. It's Hudson and Grimes. It's Gacy versus Strong. And, of course, the war games, Toxic Attraction versus Jade, KLR, Raquel, and Shirai. Uh, and then we head to our main event. Mm -hmm. A match I did not 
care was happening. I don't know what it is, bro, but it just feels like I've seen these kinds of matches over and over and over again for the last few months, and they feel like a dime a dozen to me. And it was good. What they did was good, but I was just bored because it's just like I don't have a reason to fucking care. Help me. Help me, someone. Anyone out there, please help me. You know what? I need help. Fuck. I I think there's no, like we said with just the previous match just gone, I think there's no heat on it. Hmm. But they've, they've been and, doing shit for weeks yeah, know, with these guys, the, but still. These guys are in that division. I can understand that. They're all involved in the mix. <clears throat> but B, the thing is, I think that this match should have actually been uh, saved for War Games, like the next special. Uh, because as it stood, I just think this, you know, you're right, man. This isn't anything that we haven't seen on a million other episodes of AEW, NXT, Raw, SmackDown, Rampage over the last year or so. It was a very standard, stock standard TV match. There were some very impressive moments, two or three moments where it was like, whoa, you know, like that was really impressive. So it's like, I see why these three guys are involved at the top of this division and why they've been put in a match against each other. But storyline wise there's not enough backing and i do think that i found myself just waiting to see what happened at the end that rather than actually really being like into the match where i was just you know excited whereas i think like the opening match with uh with walla uh i was more invested in that even though there wasn't tons of heat on that i i still think okay now Waller's getting his chance against the big cheese of NXT. So it's still something to get invested in. There was none of that for this main event. Um, you know, even though I thought, yeah, like athletically speaking, it was a really good match. Yeah, it's just like it's all about the kicks and the reversals and this guy's in charge. Now this guy's in charge. I know this is kind of how a wrestling match works, but then there's the dive and then there's, the, you know, there's a, it's the formula is like the same almost every single time. And you knew Carmelo wasn't going to lose the championship here. Um, so, yeah, I just, this is, I just, I've, I've had enough of triple threat and multi-man matches at the moment. I've, I've had enough of tag team matches. I think AEW and reviewing that burned me the fuck out on some of this stuff. Um, and it's making me have a hard time really investing in, in matches that don't have it. Uh, a correct build to it anyway but um the end of the match tom hey fuck hey t how you hey, fucking t. doing oh he came look out at this guy over here coming out <laughs> he came out he wiped out pete dunn mm. and then Melo got the pinfall no he victory. didn't wipe him out bro he didn't wipe him out man he whacked him bro he whacked him bro that's dime uh so Hayes gets to win. Uh and then I love that uh Tony was trying to shake hands with Trick Williams afterward. And Trick was doing this and Tony was doing this. And then Tony did this and Trick did this. Just like a nice <laughs> little touch, you know, the culture. A small detail. Yes. Yeah. A small little thing. And then um all hell breaks loose. Uh Tommaso. Uh, sorry, all hell breaks loose. LA Knight and Grayson Waller are brawling back out there. Uh, Tommaso comes out to um, kind of even the odds or whatever. And then Bron Breaker comes out. And it's like the the the, the, the new school NXT 2.0 against the previous NXT uh, guys. I guess they're building this to a fucking War Games match mm. at War Games. So there's, there's going to be two of them at War Games. Um what did you think of all that shit, bro? I, I like that. I like that idea of, of acknowledging like, um, you know, hey, NXT's, you know, we're in 2.0, 2.0 right now. It's in the in the second phase, the second iteration, uh, although technically the previous NXT was NXT 2.0 because the original NXT was that uh, contest style show. Mm. But that's neither here nor there. Nor there. I love the idea of putting the old guard of NXT, the guys that made NXT a cult product, the guys that uh, oversaw NXT going from performing in front of 50 people at a house show in Florida 
to being on pay-per-view with 20,000 people in the arena. Whether you agree with the idea of launching NXT into a mainstream brand the way that it did or not, the fact remains they wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for those old guard guys in NXT that made it what it was because people loved the matches. It was high octane. It was, it was exciting. And uh, the stories were way more rock solid as well. In any case, that's a long-winded way of saying, I think that this match as a war games match could actually have a lot of heat to it because if you're the guys that are from this old iteration of NXT, so to speak, uh, you have to be thinking a little bit IRL, like, what the fuck was so bad about what we were doing before? Why'd they have to come in and make all these changes to the show? Why is it being mm. called 2.0? Does that mean that what we did before was old and, and out of fashion now? you got to think that some of these people that have been around there for a long time, like a Tommaso and others, or a Gargano, would be thinking to themselves that that might, might be along the lines of what they might actually think. And so I think that alone, you know, will make for a good some good heat going into this. Uh, as a war games match. Yeah, bro. I, I really enjoyed the end of the show because there was, you know, the the air raid siren blaring uh, and all the guys brawling over the arena. I like the end of the show like that. It's very exciting. So it'll be interesting to see what happens as we head towards war games. But bro, we've finished the show. It's time for your rating out of 10. I'm going to give this week's episode of NXT 2.0 an 8 out of 10 because basically basically for the entire thing, I was smiling, I was popping at stuff, I was enjoying it. I felt like the people on the show were having fun with what they were doing for the most part. Like, this is what I want when I sit down for an episode of a wrestling show, man. I just want to sit down and be entertained and, and, you know, find myself making comments about stuff that I enjoy. The same as I used to when me and Rex Regum used to watch NWA Power each week. That's the same kind of enjoyable feeling I have from this week's episode of NXT. Hence, the 8 out of 10. Very high rating this week for the show. Very good, bro. I'm going to give it a 7. Okay, because I, I enjoyed the same things as you, but I think some of the matches bored me a little bit more than they than than, than you. So, um, But yeah, you know, NXT, it's a nice little product. Yeah. Uh, it's Probably not really for me, um, but that's because I'm a bitter, spoiled fan that grew up in the Attitude Era. So yeah, like everyone um, watching and the Monday Night Wars. You know, Carl would not be happy unless you know there was a Stone Cold level star, you know, or pre- preferably Stone Cold himself. You know, as as WWE and Universal Champion, he comes back, unifies them. Uh, wrestles The Rock and Roman Reigns in like a fucking triple threat match at the next SummerSlam to determine the number one contender and then fucking... It would have to go to something crazy like that to actually get Carl to uh, mark out again. But anyway, bro, I digress. (laughs) Masato Tanaka versus Mike Awesome. You know, (laughs) that's the shit that that, that thrills me. Um, But bro, thank you again. Uh, Let everyone know out there where they can find you. (laughs) All right, Instagram, Juicy underscore boy. Follow me on the gram. Twitter, at Juicy Boy. Twitch, at Juicy Boy. Follow me on there, guys. Help me get to a Twitch affiliate. YouTube. He's still not an affiliate. No, no. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't stream that often on there at the moment. Okay. Keep going. Sorry, bro. Stuff. Anyway, uh, <laughs> fucking YouTube, Juicy Boy. Subscribe right now. i got a lot of fun shit on there. There's a great documentary about the mass transit incident. There's a great documentary about fucking. Blame oh, Mel. That's right. That's right. Um, Herb Abrams. Yep. There's a good Herb Abrams documentary I made on there. Can't remember what's on my own YouTube channel. There's, so there's a tasty morsel about uh about a uh, Coco Beware beating the shit out of someone. <laughs> that's right. Go in there and check it out. Yeah, that was so much fun to make that video. <laughs> um, yeah. So go on there right now, Juicy Boy at YouTube.com. And on all the other social media platforms, Facebook even, Juicy Boy. And just in case you didn't know how to spell it, that spelling once again is J-O-O-S-E-Y-B-O-Y, Juicy Boy. And I'll fucking see you on social media, folks. Yep, and I'm California. You can find me at California WCWA on Twitter. That's K-A-R-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A-W-C-W-A. 
that's it. That's the only place you can find me. So nothing else. Um, WCWA Network, find us everywhere. Just type it in, WCWA you know we do? Network. Dude, what what do we what do we need to do? Dude, we need to just put the link tree in the description, man. Yeah, we'll just put the link tree in the description just and then just put, click on that and follow us on everything. Minutes, start chopping 15 minutes off of every review by just like <laughs> <laughs> please, please uh, follow us on Pinterest. Please follow us on Deviant Art. Please follow us on Mastodon and Mines. Uh please uh check out our Habo Hotel Room. Find us on Reddit, find us on TikTok, find us on Twitch. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. <laughs> there's Dude, there's more. I know there's more. I don't more. think we have a Snapchat <laughs> yet. I don't think you've done a Snapchat. We don't. We don't. Maybe we should debut our Snapchat this weekend. Yeah, I'll Snapchat. Anyway, I know you got to get going. <laughs> All right. Got things to I got to get friend. going. Thank you, All Juicy right. Boy. My pleasure as always, my good friend. Yep, and thank you, you sons of bitches out there, for watching this fucking review show of NXT 2.0. I'm California. This is Juicy Boy, and we will see you down the road.